Chino LaForge! What's up, Hollywood? How we doing tonight, guys? All right. Oh, man. I'm not used to it out here, guys. I'm actually from Maui. Uh, this is my first performance here on the LA stage. I'm really excited. Thank you, thank you. And you know, I gotta say, I'm not used to a couple of the, the cultural differences out here. Like, first of all, um, in Hawaii, we don't have any black people. Like, none. And that's not racist, that's observational humor. Like, none. And you guys got some beautiful black women out here. Oh my god. Oh my god, some Nubian princesses. Gorgeous. And like, I feel like I've kind of become accidentally racist over the past several years because I only have stereotypes to learn from. You know, like, uh, I came out here and got to see one of my friends who is black, and uh, he has this, this portrait of him as a superhero, and then he has like a penguin sidekick. And I was like, oh, dude, that's a, that's a cool painting, but what does it mean? He's like, oh, the, the, the penguin's my super, my super sidekick. He does the things I can't do. I'm like, oh, like swim. Oh, that's racist. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, the funny thing is about racism is that, like, it goes far back, but now it's, like, included into our clothing lines. Have you noticed that? Like, Tommy Hilfiger started it. They're like, screw you, black people, you can't wear our clothes. And then, and then black people are like, well, we got FUBU, so screw you, white people, you can't wear our clothes. You know, thank God for American Eagle stepping up and going, guys, guys, calm down. I have plenty of polos for everyone. And like, the only type of culture I get from the outside world is the tourist girls that come out. And every tourist girl wants to sleep with a Hawaiian guy. That's why they plan their vacation around their cycle. I mean, that's what happens. And th they, want, they want somebody like me, because I'm obviously not full Hawaiian, I'm mixed. I'm kind of like a pina colada. I'm tropical enough to be exotic, but I'm white enough to be safe. Uh, so, you know, but the only thing I'm worried about with the tourist girls is like they're traveling all around, they're like sailors, you know, the STD thing. Ooh. At least on Maui, like, it's so isolated. We have this way of finding out that people have an STD before they do. Just like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I'm like, wait a minute. Kevin, Jerry. Oh, shit, that girl got herpes. No. And, like, I've noticed that the worst sexually transmitted disease have the shortest names. There's the clap. That's four letters. There's the hiv. That's three. The worst sexually transmitted disease by far is something called K-I-D-S. That's right, kids. You don't believe me? That shit's for life. I'm not looking for, forward to that phone call. I'll just be like, hey, Chino, how's it going? It's Melissa. I'm like, oh, hey, Melissa, how you been? I'm good, I'm good. Listen, um, God, I don't want to say this. Uh, I went to the doctor and I have kids. <laughs> Are you sure you got it from me? It's scary, it's scary as shit. And you know, I feel like I, f I should probably just stick to porn. That's the safe way, right? Porn. But that ruins like the whole mentality of things. Like porn has messed me up and I want to tell you how. Because of porn, I'm now a big fan of the, uh, the money shot. You know what I'm talking about? The, the big finish. And that's hard to explain to a woman, you know, because a lot of women think it's like disgusting or degrading, and it's not like that for me. It's just like, let me paint you. I want to be like Jackson Pollock on a canvas, just like. Yeah, but girlfriends aren't big fans of that, are they? I had a girlfriend for like nine months and I tried to bring that argument up to her. Nothing. So I did what every other guy does. I, uh, I picked a hobby to ignore her. And uh, I chose sign language. I actually took a nine month course in sign language, yeah. And the rest of the relationship only lasted six months, which is perfect. But 
at the end of the whole um, class, we got to go to this mixer at a deaf fraternity with a bunch of other deaf people. We got to sign with them, and it was great. And I got I got to meet this this beautiful, beautiful girl. She was deaf since the day she was born, and this was like my chance to finally talk to her. So I walked up to her, and uh, I started signing with her. And the, the first thing, well, the thing about sign language is that there's no tact. You have to be really straightforward. So I just kind of came out with it after a couple sentences. I just like, I think you're a beautiful girl. I just want to tell you that. And she looked at me, and she did this. That looks sweet, doesn't it? It's, oh, you're so sweet. Would you like to sleep with me? <laughs> to which I answer. <laughs> so I take her back to my house, and she goes in the bathroom, and the, uh, I still had like my leftover stuff from the ex, so I'm like lighting the half-burnt candles and making my bed, and I like, get to my iPod, and I'm about to go to my like Enya and Sade mix, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> This is my chance to have sex to the music I want to listen to. <laughs> now, I don't know if you guys like Tupac. <laughs> Alright, guys, thanks a lot. My name is Gina LaForge. <laughs> thanks for having me on